الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد We greet you from our home here in Gombak in uh, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia on this morning of Yawm Al-Ahad uh, in the month of Jamadi al uh to return to our previous lecture entitled Islam, Russia and Crimea. One of the main points we made in that lecture was that the successful return of the territory of Crimea to the Russian Federation after it was mysteriously gifted by the Soviet Union probably midnight one Sunday night when everybody was asleep <laughs> so the Crimean people woke up next morning to find that they no longer belong to Russia. Nikita Khrushchev has decided that now you are Ukrainians. <laughs> so Crimea becomes Ukrainian territory and the Ukrainian people who are now shouting from the mountain tops and calling for NATO to intervene and shamelessly, shamelessly, shamelessly silent. Shamelessly silent on this violation of the rights of the Russian people and violation of the rights of the Crimean people. The Ukrainians don't want to talk about this. It's not convenient for them. It is inconvenient to talk about it. There is no integrity in that. No. They just gifted it. The Soviet Union just gifted Crimea to Ukraine. <laughs> so that was unjust. That was immoral. That was illegal. And it has now been corrected. And it is time for Imran Hussein to celebrate. Because this correction of this enormous injustice done to Russia and to the people of Ukraine, uh, sorry, of Crimea. And the return, the successful return of Crimea to Russia, we said in our last lecture, represents the most, the first and the most significant setback the Zionist movement has ever experienced since it came into being more than a hundred years ago. At this time, when the Russians are breathing easily and celebrating their success, we would like from here in Gombak in Malaysia to offer a gentle word of advice to the leadership of the Russian people. And we pray that Allah may take these words to them. And that is that it will be pleasing to the Lord Most High. And the Russian Orthodox Church would of course bear witness that this is a part of Christian values as well. That Russia must always stand firmly on the foundations of justice. When a people are oppressors, Russia must use her power to punish them. And when a people are oppressed, then Russia must use her power to assist them and to take them out of oppression. That's justice. And that is conduct becoming of a people who follow Orthodox Christianity. What the Soviet Union did in 1954 
sorry, 1944, what Stalin did in expelling the Crimean people, the Crimean Tatar people, Muslims, from Crimea, out of Crimea, on the allegation that they were supporters of the Nazi Germany regime. That act of expulsion was unjust. If there were a few Tatars who acted in that way and you wanted to take action against them, that's your right. But to punish an entire people in this way was manifestly unjust. They suffered. Every Russian knows that. Thousands of them died while they were being expelled on the road. Thousands of them died as a consequence of the expulsion. They suffered immensely as refugees, innocent people. And then they lived in exile for more than 70 years. And now, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, they are trickling back into Crimea. But when they return to Crimea, their properties are lost. This is the house in which my father lived. This is the house that my grandfather built. This is the property that my family owned for years and years and years and years and years. And now I cannot enter into my own home because someone else has taken it. That is unjust. And we therefore turn and ask the leadership of the Russian people to offer to the Crimean Tatar Muslims help and support, active help and support, without asking for anything in return. That's morality. That you do good and you act justly for justice sake, not as part of a deal, that we'll do this for you if you do that for us. Assist them to recover their properties, which had been unjustly taken from them when they were expelled. And in those instances where it is no longer possible for such a property to be returned to them, then offer them adequate compensation. If the leadership of the Russian people were to make this statement and declaration to the Crimean Tatar, whether they be resident in Crimea now or whether they be resident outside of Crimea, this is what we, Russia, will do for you. We will help you and support you to recover your properties. And when it is not possible for such to take place, we will offer you adequate compensation for your loss. And we do not ask of you anything in return. We do this because we are Christians. We do this because we follow Orthodox Christianity. We do this because we want to stand on the foundation of justice. Number two, when a people for no just cause have suffered so intensely, they are entitled to compensation. In international law, it is also known as reparation. And so we ask that consideration be given to offer to the Crimean Tatar people compensation for suffering that they endured and experience during that expulsion from Crimea ordered by Stalin. We do this without asking anything in return from you. We do this based on the demands of justice. We do this because we are Christians. 
Finally, we ask of the leadership of Russia, now that Allah has blessed you to recover Crimea and to deliver to the Zionists the most significant setback that they've ever experienced since the Zionist movement was created more than a hundred years ago. We ask you to do one more thing, and that is that Russia, since now, since Crimea is now Russian territory, that the leadership of Russia makes a declaration to all those Crimean Tatar Muslims who are still resident outside of Crimea, that you have the right of return to Crimea any time you choose to do so. And when you want to come back to Crimea, we will assist you in every way possible to make that return as easy as we can make it and as pleasant as we can make it. Crimea is your land. You lived in Crimea for hundreds of years. We recognize your rights in Crimea. We recognize that these rights were violated. And we want to make amends for what was done to you in the past. And as we do these things for you, we are not asking for anything in return. We are doing it because we are Christians. Finally, one more thing, and this is a, just an initial observation on my part, and that is that if Russia is to play the role that Russia is destined to play, at this most critical moment in Russian history, at this most critical moment in Russian history, when Russia, by divine decree, is to play an immensely important role in Akhirul Zaman, we ask you to turn away from Western political theory and forge a new political understanding and new political structures to allow a Muslim people resident within the Russian Federation to have such religious autonomy that they can live the way of life of Islam without any fear, without any obstacle. That they can live the way of life of Islam with the support of the Russian people and with the support of the Russian Orthodox Church and with the support of the Russian government. It should not be difficult for those of you who listen to me that if this policy is adopted, and this is only my initial observation on it, there is more to be done on it. If this policy can be framed and adopted, then around the world of Islam, Muslims wherever they are in the whole world of Islam would respond positively and with joy in their hearts that Russia is setting an example above and beyond and better than the example is being set even by the own Muslim rulers today in the world. We pray that Allah may take these words of ours, these humble words to the leadership of the Russian people, to the leadership of the Russian Orthodox Church and to the Russian people and that these words may germinate and from these words may emerge flowers inshallah that will blossom tomorrow. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samuel alim wa tu alina ya mulana inna ka anta tawab rahim barahmatika ya ashma rahmin ameen.